Good evening, Craig Allen with ABC News. Queanbeyan and surrounding Palarang Shire are natural disaster zones tonight after the Queanbeyan River burst its banks this morning, flooding parts of the city. Torrential rain overnight falling on an already sodden catchment pushed the river to dangerous levels in just a couple of hours. Alison Ramage has been in the city all day reporting on the progress of the floods and Alison, it wasn't just the overnight rain, was it? Gugong Dam has been full and spilling water for the past week. Well, as you say, Craig, Gugong Dang Dam has been full for the first time in 12 years. For about a week now, it's been full. Now, it's, um, it's, uh, with, it, with it being so full, 7,000 cubic metres a second of water is flowing over the spillway at Gugong Dam. To put that into context, that's the equivalent of twice the amount of water that flows over the Niagara Falls. That's an astonishing amount of water. And that is, has been the source of Queen Bean's problem, that coupled with that overnight rain. And Julie Doyle has been following the story and how it developed from there. The rising flood waters took emergency crews and Queanbeyan residents by surprise. It's coming through the front and back doors. It's probably 75 centimetres inside. It's flooded right throughout. Um, we can't hold it back with the sandbags. You know, the river rising that quickly, peaking at 8.4, it's certainly at the moment about a 1 in 20 year event. The city was hit by a deluge of 100 millimetres of rain overnight. Water spilled over the top of Gugong Dam and flows rushed down the Queanbeyan River, lifting water levels by three metres in just two and a half hours. We've had the, uh, the town cut in half. We've had around about 100 uh, houses and uh, businesses which have been asked to evacuate. Some residents had to be rescued by the state emergency service. We did uh, remove uh, some people from Trinkolo Place uh, by boat this morning. Uh, ten people, as I understand it, from some of the low-lying areas there. Water flooded the car parks at the Riverside Shopping Centre and the Queanbeyan Leagues Club. A crane was brought in to move cabins at the caravan park to higher ground. Some residents made the most of the rare opportunity, but businesses prepared for the worst. It's a big worry to all the businesses on the main street, obviously, that uh, we're all going to get a lot of damage from this. The river peaked at around 11 o'clock this morning and waters have started to recede. The area has been declared a natural disaster zone. It means that we have got a big clean-up ahead of us as this uh, weather starts to clear up. After years of drought, at least one resident isn't too worried. We need the water. We need the water. Perhaps not all at once. Julie Doyle, ABC News, Queanbeyan. Alison, we heard there that 100 homes and businesses were evacuated. A tough night ahead for those people. But, but generally, how are Queanbeyan people handling the situation? Well, they're a pretty stoic bunch, I must say, having spent the day in town. As we heard Julie mention, there have been 10 rescues by the SES and about 100 precautionary, mainly precautionary evacuations. And those people will be spending the night in evacuation centres in Queen Bean tonight. But really, most people have been coping remarkably well. Yes, there are businesses closed and obviously there will be a big clean-up operation and a big clean-up bill ahead. But a lot of people in Queen Bean, to be perfectly honest, have been taking advantage of a rare day off school, a rare day off work and have just been enjoying the spectacle. And Ben Lisson has been around the town today finding out about that. The water came in a hurry and the sudden onslaught caught many off guard. For most residents of Queanbeyan, it was a shock. For others, it was a disaster. It would have got into all the electrical, and once it gets into all the electrical, most of the cars these days are all on computers. They would have absolutely buggered everything. With power cut and roads closed, residents lined the water's edge to witness the river breaking a path through the city. Some made the most of it, but sports grounds, playgrounds and parks were inundated. In low-lying areas near the centre of town, whole streets were underwater. Practically while we were watching, the bottom end of the street down there started to go underwater. And then by the time I came and checked a little later, they'd put a barricade off so we couldn't actually drive out through the bottom of our street. There were no cars driving on these roads. Instead, debris from upstream rushed through the submerged streets. Emergency crews were using any means necessary to help those in danger zones. A pregnant woman who was stranded was airlifted to the Canberra Hospital, one of many people evacuated. We're ready to go and moved everything and took all the stuff we needed. We put in a youth a couple of clothes. Yeah, and we're ready to go basically, yeah. Today, Queanbeyan residents heard the flood siren for the first time in years, sounding out over a shocked community. 
They were told to prepare for a once in 20 year flood, but many say they've never seen anything like this. People would mock me and say, are oh, you being a real worry what the flood's never going to come that high? And I just rang, them, rang one of them now and I said, I told you so. There's really nothing else I can do and hope the insurance will pay. Despite receding water lines, the problems for many here have only just begun. Ben Lisson, ABC News, Queanbeyan. So Alison, what's happening there tonight and, and what's the outlook for Queanbeyan tomorrow? Well, some of the more optimistic people, Craig, have already begun the big clean-up and hopefully that won't prove to be too premature. Most people will be clearing up tomorrow and into the weekend. The Bureau, the outlook from the Bureau is pretty optimistic with not much more rain forecast over the next few days. We are hearing, though, that as some people are being allowed back home, you know, being taken from evacuation centres and allowed back home tonight, others are being kept there because although the water levels are receding quite rapidly, as the water is, is receding, there's a massive amount of debris, timber, which has been washed downstream, and that's causing a lot of access problems to those roads that were previously isolated. And of course, it's not just Queen Bean, although today the focus has been on Queen Bean, this water has all got to go somewhere. The Scrivener Dam it has all five floodgates open for the first time in 1976, and the debris, which will ultimately be washed out of here in the Queen Bean River, will end up in Lake Burley Griffin, a massive cleanup ahead in Canberra as well.